18. Winner, winner. Hello, people of the world. Today I'm gonna to be working on my 2021 Ford Bronco Black Diamond Edition. I got some parts that just came in for it, and if you're new, if you'd like to get caught up, up above my head is a link to a video that will not fill you in on the dangers of confusing a boop noodle and a nope rope. The thumbnail of this video may or may not give away what is going on here, or my shirt might give something away. That is a bunch of boxes of parts. They're going on this rig right here. First, I gotta get this thing up in the air. I like that there's a little arrow cut out in the frame that tells you where to put your jack pad. It's cute that they do that. If only they would've did it in the rear, too. Going up. Ooh. Solid. Good. Good. Solid. Today's arm day, I guess. That's good. So for those of you that have been watching this since I first got the Bronco, you know my intentions are not to make a yeet machine out of this. I'm trying to keep it subtle and tastefully upgraded. Subtle might not be exactly the correct word considering I put TE37s on a Bronco, but you get my point here. It's light upgrades. Oh, I hate these little plastic clipper doodles. You have to be so gentle with these little plastic screw popper doodles. Because if you push too hard, you'll never get the screw to come out of it. I feel like there's a sexual innuendo hidden in there somewhere. Okay, I think that's all of them. This is really easy to take out. Oh wow, there's insulation underneath it. I mean, it makes sense for sound dampening. I like that instead of putting the stupid hairy cardboard shit that some car companies do. There you go. Oh wow, it's a, it's a whole lot of nothing back there. I thought for sure it'd just be an overspray mist of paint under here, but it is completely all painted. And that looks like a cheese doodle that would give you a tummy ache. Ta-da! These right here are the new Bilstein 6100s for the sixth generation Bronco. And staying in theme with my vision I had for this when I first bought it, it's a subtle OEM Plus-ish upgrade because going with this, this is the OEM Springs off the Sasquatch package Bronco, which sits a little higher than these black diamonds. So this paired with those 6100s is a nice upgrade. It's actually a better upgrade than the factory Sasquatch suspension. This shouldn't really come as a surprise since I put some 5100s on the Ranger and these weren't sponsored. This was before Bilstein reached out to me with the offer to do this to the Bronco. Jeez, that is a big ass nut. So she said, it's 24 millimeters. <sighs> that is gnarly. Jeez. I feel like I'm working on a piece of heavy equipment right now. That shit is meaty. Ooh. That is so incredibly simple back here. Now I need to use my spring compressors. Take the spring off this strut. There we go. Now it's compressed. And that right there, I need for my other springs. So the way these are gonna work, it comes with this lower collar, and you can see there's these little notches in the body of the strut. Well, on there, this shiny part is a snap ring that kinda sits in these little notches, and then this body will sit on that your spring sits above this. So if you were to raise this to a higher notch, it would actually raise the suspension of the truck. So it's an adjustable bodied strut. Now I'm gonna put it on the lowest setting, which with the Sasquatch spring right here, gives you inch and a half of lift over the factory black diamond.
come on. Whew. The rear is done, both sides in. It's 10 till 10 at night, I'm exhausted. I still gotta torque the hardware and put the fender liners back in, but minana, minana. I left my shop a mess last night. I didn't clean up because I was too tired. It's time to knock out these fronts though. I like stuff that's simple like this. I'm just putting a spray-based hydrophobic effect ceramic quick detail spray it's not like a real ceramic coating it should at least keep it nice and clean in here since it's got that hydrophobic effect there we go i don't think i can get a torque wrench on these as long as i can get one of these torqued i get a, an idea of the feeling of leverage i need to apply to it and i can pretty much guesstimate I would imagine within five to ten pound feet there you go the combination of that detail ceramic spray I put inside here with this brand new plastic it kind of has an aroma of smoked cod with lemon drizzled on it <laughs> don't ask how last one Clipper doodles. There, now that the rear is done tackle the fronts. I can't wait to see how high this actually sits with an inch and a half of lift more. I don't think it'll be too much. Okay. There was already a mark from the factory right here with a white paint marker. So I'm using a white paint marker so I can make it match because that's critical. This didn't come with any instructions other than just the shock body itself, but this is pretty self-explanatory what you need to take apart. So the easiest way it looks to do this would be to get paint marker all over your finger. Remove these lower control arm bolts at the subframe. Disconnect or at least loosen the sway bar end link, maybe loosen this guy up. That'll give enough play that I can pop those out to be able to get this out of its housing. Let's see if that works. Okay, so these things aren't super tight either. You look like a 21. Aha, it is. Yeah, that's pretty tight. I'm gonna use the impact. I like that there's enough room to actually get a nut buster up into here. 
Some people think that this is irritating having a bolt facing in this direction, but the reason why they do that is because if this nut were to ever come off while you're on the road, the bolt can't back its way out and drop the lower control arm. It'll hit the bracket right here for your anti-sway bar. So unfortunately, that means I gotta drop the anti-sway bar out of the way to get this bolt out. It might seem like engineers hate technicians, but the reason why they do that is because it might save people's lives because sometimes people don't take care of their cars like they're supposed to. This is a big, big anti-sway bar. Okay. That just makes things a lot easier having this out of the way. Now, this should pop right out. Washa. Are you fucking serious? This thing's heavy. So I put this bolt back in here just to hold it, lower control arm up in place so it's not just hanging on the tie rod in the lower ball joint and axle. Just kind of helps support the weight of this whole knuckle and brake assembly. But yeah, it's out. A uh, little tip I learned is don't try to take out the top before the bottom. Make sure the bottom clears and this thing drops all the way out and then you can pull out the top. Look at that, that tag looks brand new. I only got like 1200 miles on the truck. Anyway, same process as the rear. I need to keep the top portion right here to reuse and then the rubber butt plug, the rest of it can be discarded. wondering why I no longer have the dust boots on here according to the instructions that is no longer required with the way these are designed but it is required to have a butt plug because you should always have a butt plug <laughs> tech tip for the day okay so check the torque on that this side Done. So if you look at this angle right here, you can see the lower control arm on the driver's side sits a lot lower than on the passenger side. An inch and a half lower approximately because Sasquatch spring. As far as the other side goes, I really want to listen to some music right now. So let's do time lapse. Ready? Go. I had to wait till the next day to do this because I was just too exhausted, but it's it's definitely higher. You can notice it. I think also it leveled it. It lifted a little bit more on the front than it did the rear. So I normally don't like leveling kits, but it actually, I kind of like it. It looks good. It feels, it definitely feels higher. It's crazy how just a little bit of lift will make that much of a noticeable difference from inside the truck. Well, I'd be lying if I said I noticed a difference driving this on the road. It doesn't feel any more harsh or soft. It still rides like factory, which is good. That's what I was going for. I wasn't really trying to ruin this thing as far as the driving experience goes. I know you guys want me to take it off-road 
and the reason why I am not doing it in this video and why I haven't yet is because I still have to film a review video of this thing and I want to film the review going off-road but I want it to be like my first impression reaction and have it be genuine on camera so as stupid as that sounds I still haven't even used the crawl gear So there you go. Suspension is complete and I'm actually going to film another video on this because I got a couple more parts for it and I just want to get that knocked out before diving back into the Ranger because I'm going to try to finish the truck once I get back into working on that. Plus the cab is about ready to go over into the booth today. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you to Bill Stein for sponsoring the suspension. And uh, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.